Hi, my name is Mike. Welcome to my workshop. It's pretty much just my basement so far with a door on some sawhorses. Uh, so today we're going to be making a light box, a uh, custom light box if you don't know what that is. It's pretty much a bunch of uh, cardstock with uh, silhouettes cut out uh, with spacers in between and then a light shining behind it. And uh, so far what we do have is the box part portion uh, completed, or the pieces completed, uh, ready for assembly. But uh, first off, we have uh, these 3D printed pieces with a silk copper PLA. Uh, printed on my uh, Prusa Mark III, or i3 Mark III, and uh, it's pretty much just uh, little triangle pieces with the square in the middle, making it so each one of these sides slot in and are glued on, uh, making the internal dimensions exactly 8.5 by uh, 11, which is a normal piece of paper because I wanted to use the biggest amount. Uh, these four took about 16 or nine, nine hours of print uh, so far, and uh, they uh, are pretty okay. They have these little circles uh, in the corners of them, or in the, the slots, uh, to go and give it a little more surface area for when they're actually glued, and they will be epoxied to this wood. The wood is uh, just a poplar board you can buy at Walmart or at uh, Home Depot. Uh, for like, I don't know, four or five bucks maybe. Uh, it's three and a half, I think, by a quarter inch, uh, and it's four feet long, so I got all my pieces plus another spare side um, if I ever need to. And of course, poplar doesn't normally look like this. So it's colored with a mixture of craft paint. It's pretty much just imperial red and some type of brown mixed together with water, and I just kind of painted it on in two or three layers. Uh, and then sanded it down because the grain was raised and became really rough. Then after that, I did a bunch of coats of an acrylic. No, is it an acrylic? Someone see what it is. Uh, no, it's actually a rust-oleum uh, clear enamel over it, which raised the grain. Of course, it did because there was nothing sealing it. Uh, and uh, then I just did another quick sanding on it, and hopefully you'll be able to see how nice it turned out. It has a very nice warm color, and I think it goes quite well with these copper corners. So uh, now that these are pretty much done, uh, the only thing I have to do is glue them up. And I might actually drill holes in the edges here to give it some of the epoxy to really grip onto something in, these, in this wood so it comes together. And of course the outside frame um, that I put on the front uh, that will be the same copper, hopefully uh, will give it some additional strength in it because I'm not too confident on this. I just kind of threw this together. Uh, there's no proof of concept. It's just kind of going flat out at it. Uh, now we're pretty much going to go and tie together the corners of this. And uh, since I only have two clamps, because, you know, I just bought a house and uh, we need clamps, and I am severely unprepared for pretty much everything, uh, I got two cheap-ass clamps from Home Depot. Uh, so I guess we'll just start off with uh, one piece um, probably the shittiest looking one just in case, which I have to say, no, that was pretty good. Actually, they all look pretty damn good. So I guess I'm just gonna have to be really careful uh, with this. So we'll take all of them. So I'm only gonna be able to do one corner at a time on one piece. So I guess I'll just pick and choose uh, this one here. And uh, so it's gonna be overlapped like this. So what I gotta do is I'm gonna drill holes in the wood, uh, just a little bit on the very edges, uh, just to give it a little bit more bite, this epoxy. I got this cheap ass quick uh, setting epoxy from uh, Harbor Freight. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna go and give this just a little bit, just, just a little hole. There we go. And I'll just have to clean that up. shallow holes just to kind of give it a little bit more bite. So I just got a piece of cardstock here that I should cut out for a mistake. And I'm going to just do a little bit. We don't need that much, really, for each one of these edges. Of 
course with this stuff, you just want. And you need to be equal, but I, I didn't do that, and I got it on my hands. So, you know, I did everything wrong I could possibly do. And also, this is not very much. It's probably just barely enough of what I want to do. I just want to make sure that it's... top of these pieces um, is the front line to be as flat as possible so you can go So while that epoxy on here, uh, you know, uh, hardens up, um, give it 15 minutes, uh, I just want to go and show what I'm doing to the actual corners. So these are the corners that they're going to actually slot into there. So these faces are going to be touching one another. So pretty much what I'm doing is drilling shallow holes in there just to give it a little bit more grip. Because uh, when this stuff oozes in there and it'll get in that hole and hopefully maybe soak into the wood a little bit and then it'll also get on this and uh, get in that hole there and just give it a little bit more um, of an aggressive hold on there and uh, hopefully it turns out pretty good. Uh, what you can see here is that there's a little bit of epoxy in that crevice there it oozed out so hopefully that's a good sign that there is enough but i know there wasn't enough um probably so what we're gonna do is just kind of watch this and uh once this hardens up on here then we'll be able to uh, move forward but i'm gonna get 15 solid minutes it's not the warmest down here but it's definitely not cold so here are all the pieces and uh yeah just the shallow holes and uh we'll see how um that works okay so it's not been the full 15 minutes uh because you know i'm impatient uh and uh, i took it off it says like four minutes of holding it together so it should be good it feels pretty solid uh so that's a pretty good sign so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and get some more epoxy and uh, we're going to go and try another corner um, from what i think i'm going to do the best course of action is to go and get uh, an opposing longer corner on there Maybe um, just to go and uh, you know get as many pieces going as possible. So yeah, I'm gonna get the opposing corner. Uh, I'll put on the clamps. I'll leave it on for like half the time, like eight minutes, uh, and then I'll take the clamps off and move them to another piece uh, so we can get this done. And uh, you'll watch that probably in a uh, time lapse or something, or I'll be done. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll see. So it's, it's, it's not done yet, uh, and I'm just kind of throwing it together, but I'm actually quite happy with how this is looking. Um, it's, it's hard to show in the light, but I think that the wood looks very nice with these corners here. Uh, and once this box is done, I think it's going to be nicer than the rest of it. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, that's the corner. Uh, of course, this last corner is going to be a little bit of an issue here because I only have two clamps for the one side, yet I'm going to have to go and clamp both to go and glue it up. So uh, probably we'll be, you know, using 
these clamps right here. Uh, but I'm actually very happy with how that's turning out. So yeah, that, that right there is pretty pretty damn exciting. This probably is about three, four minutes, and then I'm gonna throw on uh, this corner, or now I'll be throwing on that piece. Who knows? Who knows what we're gonna be doing? Um, but uh, yes, I'm pretty sure that uh, we're gonna go and get this uh, done pretty damn soon. Okay, one other thing. Um, I found, I think I figured out my clamp problem, uh, that I don't have enough of them. Uh, I think I have most, uh, most of it figured out. Here, this is a clamp right here. It's adjustable, it's adjustable right here, and you just kind of shove it in between, and there's a little bit of give. Okay, so here it is in action. Uh, it kind of spans the very corner uh, of it, uh, and it keeps it, centered um, pretty well and then the other side has the two clamps um, so hopefully that stays together pretty nice uh, it looks like actually the side with the shitty clamp is looking almost better um, than the other side but it, everything's all equal uh, everything's all kind of flat to where it needs to be uh, so I'm gonna go and let this sit uh, probably until tomorrow uh, and uh, I'll also work on the inside light box. I might test out and make sure a piece of paper actually fits in here, but um, for right now, this is pretty much done. So here are the cutouts. Uh, this is my living room, and I'm in the middle of a giant renovation. So uh, it's a total mess. So if you see anything and you're like, oh my God, this guy's a lunatic, uh, it's uh, just temporary, or is it? Uh, so these are the cutouts right here. It's actually going to be a sunset with an ocean, and that's a reflection. And then it's got a cityscape, uh, which I'll show you. And then it's uh, pretty much uh, surrounded by uh, like a hills in front that has like a little winding road um, that you'll be able to see once the light is shining through it. And then it's got two uh, front pieces that are um, trees. Uh, this is meant to be... Um, based off uh, Davao uh, City in the Philippines. Uh, this is the mountain, uh, Mount Apo, I think it is, and this is Davao City. And this is kind of like my initial sketch uh, here um, where everything is based off of, uh, just trying to go and figure out what the individual layers are gonna be. So with all these layers, get that here, uh, they're gonna be held uh, apart by this really cheap, garbage uh, foam core uh, in strips that go along the edge here. And uh, so each one's gonna go and get that, uh, get a border, and then they're gonna be glued together, uh, each one so it's stacked, and then it'll fit directly into the box. Uh, and then we'll go and test out the lights. So it's the next day, and uh, the box is completed. Uh, it looks pretty damn good. Uh, if I may say so myself. Uh, this will be the back, you know that, because this edge along the back here will actually, you'll be able to see this. Uh, and uh, so that's why I painted it. The front doesn't matter so much. So uh, right now it's pretty sturdy. It makes little cracking noises a little bit, but I think that epoxy is gonna hold it pretty well. Uh, next we're gonna go and make a frame that goes around the edge. Uh, the frame corner is actually gonna be corners. Uh, are gonna go over these and it's gonna go and glue to the corners and each piece of wood so hopefully that uh, holds it together and in between will be um, about 16 millimeter uh, like like uh, runs of between each between the corners they actually slot in uh, my 3d printer is not actually big enough to go and make um, a big enough chunk of this frame so I'm gonna make it in pieces and try to make it nice so uh, I guess I'll show you what the corners are gonna look like um, they're going to be actually this shape, so I'm actually stealing, using this exact shape um, for the corners here. Uh, so I'm using that shape so it'll look like it'll be one piece coming out. And it's going to be about 10-ish uh, millimeters um, high. Uh, and uh, I'll go and show you these pieces right here. Uh, these uh, corner pieces are going to be printed just like this. They're going to be at a point one uh, millimeter detail, uh, which is quite detailed for this. And also I have uh, ironing on. Uh, it's uh, the first names of, um, of uh, my dad, which is Michael and uh, 
my stepbrother is just joking. So uh, that's going to be in opposing corners. Uh, the ends are going to be in opposing corners, and the jigs are going to be in opposing corners. I thought that'd be a nice little detail. Of course, like this, you can see that this is the same uh, shape on the outside, and uh, then it has a little slot here, uh, which is where the uh, rooms, the bands that go in between each corners uh, that cover up the edge, um, will slot into. Uh, I'm hoping this works. I'm not completely sure. Uh, how it'll look, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that it'll be okay. Uh, it does overlap into the inside of the box by about 10 millimeters, um, so that should cover up any gnarly edges of the insert that I'm putting in there. Uh, but this is uh, what they're going to be, and it says uh, 3 hours and uh, 14 minutes, uh, but I do have it on stealth mode, so it will be 3 hours. 16 minutes, which is just fine. Uh, nothing too crazy. The infill is 5%. It does have ironing on, uh, and uh, it, I think it's going to be pretty good. I'm not, I'm not uh, looking for uh, any crazy detail. There's not that much crazy detail in there, except for this um, very top uh, few layers. Um, but it looks like it's going to go in uh, pretty good. So I'm going to go and take this. I'm going to put this on the 3D printer. And uh, while I do this, then I can go and hop back into uh, making the final pieces for the inside, the, the frame or the, the insert. Uh, I actually added a few more layers to go and give a little more detail. Uh, so I'll throw that on right now. Uh, maybe I'll go and put on a camera to go and uh, let the 3D printer uh, do its thing uh, while I'm doing that. And then we'll uh, meet back here. Okay, uh, that was a failure. The camera died uh, in the middle of uh, 3D print, but it's still happening right there. Uh, and it looks like we got two hours before it's done. So um, I guess I'll just give another update. Uh, I did finish all of the inserts, uh, which are pretty great. Uh, everything's a mess uh, right now with the whole uh, renovation and also the stupid project. Well, it's not a stupid project. It's a good project. It's just a lot going on. So I'll show you the ins. Uh, there it is, right there. Uh, it is. Let me see. I don't even know. It, it's it's quite a few layers. So we got tree layer, and then we got a secondary tree layer, and then we got a bush layer here, and then we got like this. I think it's like some hills or something, or maybe it's the beach or something. Uh, and then we got a front. Uh, like a, a front city layer here, which are these are some um, of the buildings in the city that this is based off of, and like a little bit more of like a like a jungle on like a mountain, and then this is a mountain, and then the back uh, city layer, and then the ocean with the nice uh, reflection of the sun, and then the sun, and then the back is just one piece of that cardstock, but it's actually put up with two layers here. So it's actually two layers, so it's a little bit further out. I was hoping it might glow through a little bit better, but that will fit perfectly in this box. And I did put these holes in here to go a little bit of light through um, because it really needs a little more light. Every single time I shine it to the light, just a let a little bit of light in the corners and it kind of lets a nice glow happen. Right there, uh, that'll uh, really tie it together. Uh, but of course, we gotta wait. Uh, the stringers, the edges, edge pieces that go around front the corners, um, that's not gonna be done until I got these set, and then I can go and measure the exact length that they need to be, and then I'll 3D print them. Uh, but now that I got that, I have to start thinking about how I'm gonna light it, and what I'm probably gonna do is use uh, LEDs, like individual LEDs, and 3D print a little holder so they go all the way around the edge. And then the back plate will have like a aluminum tape on it to go and reflect it uh, a little bit better. Uh, but we'll see uh, when we get there. So uh, I'll wait for this 3D print to go and finish, and then we'll uh, get back to it. Okay, it's the next day. I cleaned up a little bit. Uh, the corners are done. I taped them in place just to go and uh, make sure that they uh, were uh, in the right spot and then I measured in between to go and make the 
uh, like the, the, the pieces in between. Uh, those are done printing. These are going to be the pieces that go in between, uh, and these are what's going to go and slide um, in there. Uh, they took, uh, I think, about four hours to print. So here's a dry fit of them. Uh, the ones with the M will go in opposite corners of the J. And uh, yeah, they just slot right in. So what I'm going to do is I'll do each corner, and I'm going to do it on a piece of this clear plastic. Um, so if any of the epoxy comes out when I'm actually gluing the corners together, uh, gluing this frame together, it won't uh, stick to whatever I'm sitting it on. I'm probably going to put some weights on it to go and make sure that it um, sits all nice and flat. And then once this is all glued up, then we're going to take this and we're going to put it on the frame here. And we'll put epoxy or some other type of glue all around the edge and we will um, set it on there. Okay, here it is uh, with the inserts just kind of sitting in there. You can't see much detail. Uh, it looks much better in person, but you know, there's the the box. It's all in there. And then let me flip that around to kind of show you what the back looks like. So this is what it's looking like. This out of the way. Uh, that's what it's going to look like. Uh, I'll, I'm going to 3D print some little corner things that hold... Uh, this tight in there and then I need to go and put uh, LEDs along the very edge and then make a little lip also to go and hold a uh, back panel that has some aluminum tape on it uh, and this will reflect the light that way um, and hopefully make it a little bit brighter uh, so I guess I'll design that next so it's a new day new haircut uh, same project Right now I have the retainers that will hold in the insert into the box uh, printing. They're just L brackets. I think they're uh, 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters and uh, they'll push up against, keep the insert flat against the front and I'll just hot glue it to the inside of the box. So if I ever do have to go and, you know, fix something in the box, I can just, you know, easily remove the hot glue uh, and get the insert out. Uh, so next we're going to move on to how it's going to be lit. So uh, how I've been lighting pretty much all of my projects are uh, these uh, five millimeter straw hat LEDs uh, right here. Uh, they're three volt uh, warm white. I also have another one that is actually color changing. They actually have a circuit inside that changes uh, that goes the full color spectrum uh, repeatedly. Uh, of course, uh, when you have those in a project, uh, they're, they're not in sync because the electronics aren't that great. So, you know, one could turn, you know, one could do a full cycle faster than the other. So they're all going to be separate. And I've had that issue before, but um, I might actually use a few of those in there just to add a little splash of color as it changes. Uh, so I guess we'll go over to uh, what the light strip that will be holding these um, LEDs will look like. So uh, here is the long side, uh, there's going to be two of these, and um, the little leads that are on the bottom of the LEDs will fish through these holes, and then the uh, what leads will either the long side, uh, either side will uh, fold uh, to each side through these little uh, holes here, and then up, and that's how I'm going to uh, wire it up. So this side might be all the long side. Uh, and I'll uh, wire out walls parallel. Uh, the long sides are going to have nine LEDs, and then the short side, which oh, now here's the long side, uh, will have nine LEDs, and the short side will have seven LEDs. Uh, so it's 14 on each side, and then what 19 on the other. And I can't do the math to you know figure that out right now. Um, probably like 36, maybe, maybe, yeah, something like that. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, or 32 or something, I don't know. Uh, math is uh, not my strong suit when I'm on camera. So uh, yeah, these are gonna fit together. I beveled the edges so they don't knock into each other while it goes up uh, the walls. Uh, so I'm gonna go and print these out once the other pieces are done. And uh, then we'll uh, start on the wiring, which will take a really long time. Okay, so uh, they're done now, and I started putting the LEDs in there. So here's the LEDs. Uh, I made marks on one side, and that's going to be the short side. 
uh, and uh, they go through the bottom and they twist around and then I'm just going to go and connect them all on this side and connect them all on that side and I'll connect them to each one and this is going to be the top and this is going to have some uh, color changing LEDs um, probably the not the furthest two over but the one over these two are going to be color LEDs just to go and make uh, the, the sky just a little bit more interesting um, up here and here. I think that would be nice to have just a little bit of color thrown in there. Okay, so I soldered up the first uh, light strip here. Pretty much what I am using is uh, some old ribbon cable from uh, a Packard Bell, an ancient desktop from, uh, I don't know, like 1995. Uh, so this is from that. Uh, so I'm just ripping off one piece at a time. And I start here and uh, I solder all the way up. I actually am melting off the outside plastic on each one because stripping it would just be too tedious. Um, and it does work and I soldered it all up. So let's go and uh, see if this works. I'm pretty sure this should be negative and this side should be positive. And there it is. Okay, so now it's all wired up. Each LED and this is gonna be a test if I can do it one-handed. So I'm just gonna be, there it goes. That's gonna be the bottom side or no, that's going to be a side, that's the bottom, another side, and then the top with the two color changing in the corner. So this is going to go and be hot glued into the back of the box, and uh, let's go and see how that looks. So this is what it looks like, all lit up. Uh, you can see the two colors on top change. Uh, this is not how bright it's actually going to be, it's this little 3 volt battery is a uh, Part, partially dead um, but they're in there uh, is one thing uh, I wired a little pigtail in there to go and tie into everything uh, I might actually add some more LEDs to the back panel uh, because it could be a little bit brighter but uh, we'll have to go and see um, it looks pretty good uh, the, just the bottom isn't as uh, bright as I was hoping now you need to make a back panel, and that back panel needs to have um, a place for the batteries to go into. Uh, and uh, from what I'm thinking is maybe the foam core board that I have here and 3D print uh, kind of like a strengthening piece to this and super glue it, maybe. Uh, and then cover the inside with aluminum tape to go and make it shine a little bit more uh, and have a place for the batteries to actually be in there. I'll make a battery box. Uh, and uh, it'll be based around uh, these simple contacts. You can buy battery contacts uh, anywhere. So here's like uh, one side with the spring on them uh, and the other side without the spring. So what I'm going to do is uh, use my measuring utensils and design a battery box for this and also uh, that plastic strengthening piece to go and make that foam core board a little bit tougher. Okay, so now we have the back done, uh, and this is what it looks like. Uh, I 3D printed uh, this uh, piece uh, in half, Let's see where it was uh, cut because it was too big for my 3D printer. Um, that's going to be where the batteries are held, uh, and this is going to be on the outside. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but I really didn't want it to uh, intrude too much on the inside because it might cause shadows and everything. So uh, this is going to be the back. Uh, it's actually inset a little bit to go and fit in to the back. Uh, and I'm going to be covering it with tape uh, so it's super reflective uh, and should make sure it's bright. Uh, I got a hole here for the switch, which uh, is going to look like uh, that and uh, and then I got slots here for the 
battery terminals. Uh, I'm going to go and actually force the wires through here, solder them up, and then hot glue the terminals to either side here. And uh, I got a little cover uh, that'll go over and cover the batteries. Uh, so everything should be set. Uh, this doesn't look that pretty. I actually hot glued it. I tried to super glue this uh, to the, uh, the board here and it, it didn't stick. It just glued my fingers together. So I have a piece of paper that is going to fit on top and will be glued on here uh, to go and cover up the any ugliness uh, and I'm gonna go and hand paint this copper the same color as uh, the edges and actually they do match quite a bit so it should look pretty good okay so I got uh, the terminals uh, they are wired together in loops so that loop is still closed and this loop actually comes through to attach itself to one side switch because it was just closer. Uh, I can actually run off these two batteries for now, but if I want, I can put a second pair uh, into there. Uh, I'm going to throw this on. Uh, I'm just going to tape it on for now. I don't need it to go and be on really good. I just need to go and make sure that the batteries don't fall out while I'm jiggling this around uh, so I can go and get the box over there and I can figure out exactly which is negative or positive on the wires over there, uh, and then we can go and test this out. And there it is. Uh, I got one side hooked up, but it took me a little bit to go and figure it out. It's only uh, flashing because uh, the wires are just kind of wrapped around the terminals. But there's the on-off switch. Perfect. So I'm gonna go and uh, shorten these wires and then you know, shorten these wires, and then I'm gonna go and disconnect that. Uh, I'll shorten the wires. I'm gonna go and put the aluminum tape on here because a lot of light is actually getting through here, and I want it all to go forward. Uh, so I'll, I'll shorten the wires and uh, get the aluminum tape on. Well, it is super late, and uh, the back is all done. Uh, I actually probably will have a picture right here of uh, the aluminum tape all on the back allowing it to reflect uh, all the light. Uh, the back is covered in the paper and uh, to go and get rid of any of the ugly glue that I uh, did. And then uh, I painted the whole back with a copper color that really matches. Uh, so I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, this is uh, the final product. Uh, I think it turned out pretty darn good. Uh, there's the sign, and here's the back. Uh, I might do another coat of the copper, but actually I think it kind of looks kind of looks nice uh, there, and it matches the corners pretty well. Uh, I do have a little sign uh, that's actually printing right now. I'll probably put that on in the morning, because this is actually going to be gifted tomorrow. Uh, an on and off switch, and then like a little plaque saying four trip or double A batteries uh, with the orientation of what the battery should be uh, on there, and uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. It's got soup tits on the back, uh, and uh, here's it lit up. And uh, I'll try to go and get some glamour shots of it. I might actually go outside in the very cold, throw this on the back of my car, and and uh, see if I can get any good uh, video or photos of this. Uh, so uh, thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll have another project soon. Bye.